So we wanted to talk about what we've been doing with Docker, but particularly how we've been using Docker with Mesos. Um, who here has heard of Mesos or is using it? Oh, okay, Twitter guys, obviously. Um, but we're big fans of Mesos. Uh, we're really pushing it out a lot. Uh, we think it's the missing part of the puzzle too for uh, Docker and Mesos together. Uh, I've heard a lot of people talking tonight about this idea of it's, it's great how Docker is isolating these things within the machine, but across multiple hosts, how do you coordinate that? Uh, and as it turns out, these things work together really well. Um, so how we've arrived at it, just to give you a little bit of sort of motivation about where we ended up with our, how we ended up with our architecture. Um, we started down the path of Mesos. So for those of you that don't know Mesos, Mesos is a resource manager for distributed computing. Uh, so a little bit like uh, Yarn and Hadoop, if you're familiar with that. Um, so based on a particular request for a certain amount of resources that you want to use to perform a task, it, it allocates a portion of a CPU and a certain amount of memory within a cluster of computers. And it handles uh, managing that those, there's isolation within that task as well, so tasks don't step on each other and those um, commitments are, are guaranteed. Uh, it, it's actually using, there's a little bit of overlap with Docker there because it's using um, Linux containers to do that. So um, we start with Mesos actually for our batch computing. Uh, so we're running Hadoop, uh, we're doing a lot of big jobs overnight. Uh, recently we've started using Spark a lot. Uh, so these are the sort of jobs that run big data computations overnight. Uh, in the middle of the night, things need to wake up. Uh, originally it was cron, uh, run a whole lot of complicated processes, copy a whole lot of files out, run a whole lot of things out across the cluster. The amount of computing resources that we need uh, is, you know, of course growing all the time to be able to uh, accomplish this. So. Um, Mesos was a great platform to scale that up in a fairly easy fashion. Um, recently though, we thought that, you know, this, this Mesos thing has worked so well for us that it would be great to take a leaf out of uh, Twitter's book actually, uh, and run not just our batch processing in Mesos, uh, but our services as well. So our, uh, our, we, we have a RESTful service oriented architecture, uh, like most people, uh, and we have 60 or something services that are out across separate boxes. Um, so we wanted to see whether we could bring these into the Mesos cluster as well. So not just using Mesos for this sort of ad hoc uh, jobs that wake up in the middle of the night and consume resources, but long running services. Uh, so things like uh, our recommendation service, could we get that running in Mesos? Now, the reason why we wanted to do that is because the Mesos cluster actually provides a whole lot of infrastructure for us there. Uh, so problems that at the moment we're solving in a fairly ad hoc manner, uh, such as high availability, you know, every service that we're running, we have to have some kind of high availability story around it. So that if one of the servers fails, there's failover and that's handled, uh, we need to be able to, you know, know that we can scale things up and down quite quickly. Uh, we use Chef and Puppet, unfortunately both. <laughs> um, to be able to, you know, deploy these things out across the uh, clusters fairly easily. But, you know, this was complicated and what we're finding is every team was solving these problems slightly differently. Um, so the advantage here with uh, Mesos is it gives us a, a basically a fairly consistent way to solve these where that's all handled actually in the infrastructure within Mesos and we can just concentrate on writing the service. Uh, so here in our architecture, where uh, most of our services, uh, well, that me and Pablo are working on, are written in Play, which is a Scala web framework. Um, that gets deployed out across Mesos. Uh, Mesos actually tells it which, when we give it a package, it assigns a particular port uh, and decides which machines it runs on. Uh, and then we're putting hard proxy in front of that, and we're using hard proxy to do our discovery. So Mesos, uh, through a, an addition here, which is written on top of Mesos called Marathon, uh, that actually handles that when you give it a particular jar file or a zip package, it deploys it out across the cluster, spins up instances of it, um, and then also get, does the service discovery part of that as well. So it'll tell you uh, which particular nodes in the cluster at, on what particular ports uh, the service is running on. And then we, that gets auto published to our high proxy. Um, so outside traffic just has to hit the one endpoint and it's routed to the right place in the cluster for the services. Now, one of the big advantages, of course, uh, for this too, is that, I mean, it handles all our fault tolerance and scalability 
uh, requirements here as well. So if one of those services falls over, uh, be it that the machine itself goes down or that the, the, uh, the container within it stops working, uh, it's being monitored through Mesos and Marathon. Uh, so it sees it's gone down and it will move it to another node and restart it up. Likewise, if we want to scale it as well, we just have to go into Marathon and I'll show you the interface and how easy that is in a second and just tell it that we need more instances and it will deploy more instances ac across the cluster. So it's been a pretty great solution. So I mean, this just summarizes the, the things that it's taking care of for us. So this is as software developers, we're not having to worry about this part anymore. So our philosophy has been Mesos all the things. Um, so it's as easy as this. So this is actually Marathon, which is that component that sits on top of it. So the, the analogy of Marathon is that Mesos is, uh, if Mesos is the operating system for distributed computing, Marathon is a bit like Upstart. So it's the thing that's sitting on top of that, monitoring the applications and tasks, restarting them, uh, moving them around if you need to spin more up. So it's here we're putting in a new application, so we just need to give it a particular name, uh, command. Uh, we give it the constraints with a certain amount of memory and CPU uh, that we need, and how many instances that we want to spin up. Now, this last bit, though, is where Docker comes in. So Marathon uh, can work with jar files. I mean, it works beautifully with jar files if you're in the Java world. So if you bake everything into your jar, then it has everything it, it needs to run. Uh, it can also work with zip files. The main thing is that these packages have to be completely self-contained. And of course, uh, not every component we're deploying is so easy to manage. Uh, sometimes we need software installed on the machines. Uh, sometimes there's multiple libraries that have to be put in and dependencies. So it's not as easy as just baking a big fat jar file and putting it here in Marathon. So that's where Docker comes in uh, and works really well. So there was uh, this beautiful extension was published recently uh, by the guys of uh, Mesosphere uh, that integrates Docker into Mesos. So how this is working is that Mesos is still being used to run the cluster and the tasks within the cluster, so each individual service. Um, but now, rather than it being a jar, a jar file or a zip file that you're deploying, um, you specify a particular Docker command to run. So then Docker is pulling down uh, a, a Docker container and that's got all the dependencies and stuff that you need pre-baked in so you can handle some you know, much more complicated deployment uh, configuration problems with that. Uh, and that's running it up in Marathon and Docker integrate really beautifully around. So any of those constraints that you've put in around uh, the amount of CPU uh, and memory that you're allowed gets passed through to Docker and that's handled in Docker then instead. In fact, we even have some very scary things that we uh, are starting to try and manage through this. Uh, not to frighten anyone here, but it was Halloween the other night. So. so we also have a few legacy things that we need to deploy. So we are curious as to whether we could have those in Mesos as well. Uh, that was certainly not something that would be possible with um, Mesos and Marathon out of the box, but through Docker we can, because we can bake this all into a Docker mono container. Uh, which contains all the .NET web services, which is some of our legacy stuff. Uh, and by putting that in a Docker container, then we can just push that out through Marathon and Mesos. It starts up Docker, Docker takes care of downloading the particular container instance and runs it up. Um, this is really important in an environment like ours. Uh, OpenTable has been going uh, for a number of years, uh, you know, unlike you know, the startups here in the room. Uh, so we do have quite a complicated heterogeneous environment where it's, we would love it if everything was written in Scala, but unfortunately there's quite a few different platforms. Um, but with Docker and Mesos together, we're, we've actually got, despite the fact that we've got all these different technologies and quite, quite a difficult deployment architecture, uh, underneath the scenes uh, there's basically a, you know, a very uniform way of how we're dealing with um, getting this stuff out there and how it's run up and monitored and our high availability around it. <laughs>